All right. Well, welcome everyone to another Bay Trail Confidential, our 10th and my first in a couple months. We, I took a vacation in, in August and I'll be telling you what I did on my vacation. I have given you guys a poll to fill out. I see many of you have. I'll give you another 30 seconds to complete it. That's more than you would get in Texas, by the way. And I am going to go ahead and get my slides going on this thing so you can start seeing these seeing the slides for our show and I'll close the poll. If I can figure out how to do that. There's things you forget in, in a couple of months, but let's see. I'm gonna share the results of the poll with you guys. And we, this is great. I love seeing this. We have people from all over the Bay Area, which makes sense because I have been all over the Bay Area as you will hear later. So, um, we could use a few more people from Marin, which where I had a really good time. And also I spent a you know whole day up in the wine country, but we, we will have to get more people from there. And then as far as these places we asked you about, these are places on the peninsula that Ethel and I will be talking about in, in Lee. Uh, and um, you'll, you'll be hearing more about them. They're great places to visit. And as usual, we see the majority of you like to hike and we also have a fair number of bicyclists and then some of the other sports are a little um, less well represented, but we'll have to work on that. And many of you, this is great. Many of you have taken bikes on mass transit. I'll be talking about that. Uh, so I am Rodney Paul. This is Bay Trail Confidential, a program about the Bay Trail. I am joined by my co-presenter, Ethel Kanapka. How are you doing tonight, Ethel? I'm well, thanks. Glad to be back. We're really glad to have you back and you've got some great stuff to share with us. And then Lee Huo, how are you, Lee? I'm doing fantastic, Rodney. I'm really excited to hear about uh, your your trip and Tom's trip around the Bay. Yeah, let me introduce him. Um, Tom Lent is, I, I should have put his name on his screen. He uh, joined me for part of my trip around the Bay and he's going to be joining us uh, in that segment to talk about that. We're also gonna be seeing in a second his Bay Trail cred, which is pretty impressive. Uh, main thing here is uh, we're going to keep everybody muted except for the presenters until the end. At the end, we'll let you guys unmute and ask questions and make comments. We always like to hear that. But in the meantime, please make use of chat because we will be paying attention to chat. And um, feel free to ask questions, make statements. If, you, if I say something you don't agree with, feel free to put that in chat. I'm always good about that. And um, if you don't like the chat box and you find it distracting, it is possible to pop it up by clicking the little chat button and then dragging it to a, a less obtrusive place on your screen. I create show notes for each of the episodes. I have to be honest, I, I'm, a, I'm a little behind on this. So I don't think that page is, is active anymore. Um, I see a question, oh, the, the per a person using the iPhone couldn't use the poll. I, I apologize for that if that's the case. Um, I, sometimes these different devices behave in different ways. So I'll send out the survey tomorrow and it will include um, the link to the show notes, which will be, they'll probably still be pretty skeletal at that point, but in a few days, they'll be more fleshed out. So we are joined, as I said, by Tom Lent. Um, and here's our program. We're gonna be, um, we got a little bit of Bay Trail news to share with you, some good news. Uh, we'll be talking first about Coyote Point Coyote Point Recreational Area and other peninsula parks. And, and then what I did on my vacation, part one. And then most importantly, the drinking fountain contest, because if you saw the slides at the beginning of the show, you know, I visited a lot of drinking fountains on my trip around the Bay and we'll find out exactly how many. Also I'm gonna have a couple of polls. We're, we're gonna ask you which part of my trip did I see the most in the fewest drinking fountains. So get ready to vote on that. So we, are, we have the same Bay Trail cred, which is where you have been either on foot, on bike, or basically not in a car, on the Bay Trail. And I, I just love this. And I, I hope many of you will get a chance um, to do this. Um, but Tom, you did this today. You, you, you gave us your Bay Trail cred. And you live, you live in Berkeley. That's what the star indicates. But you've been on a lot of the Bay Trail. Um, this is looking like I'd say 85 to 80, 85 to 90%. The one area I, I see up here is like some of these parts of Marin would be great for you to visit. Um, Tom, do you have any plans to do that? 
originally planning on getting up there the, to the uh, sanitary district or whatever, which doesn't sound very appealing from its name, but uh, but from the uh, the show uh, um, before your vacation that uh, looks really appealing, and I'd love to get up there maybe during the migration time and do some bird watching while doing that pedaling that section. You mentioned to me that you're becoming more of a birder, and um, that I'm in the same position. <laughs> in, in in that location in particular is fantastic for that. Ethel, you have added to your Bay Trail cred, and um, this is really great news because it means that you you've really put the um, the leg injury you were recovering from behind you. Yeah, seven months of not being able to get out there, so it's been great uh, this past month getting out and hitting the hitting the pavement again. And we're going to be giving you some more places to visit. I know we're going to be talking <laughs> about the Albany Bulb in October. And um, I think you'll love going there. So we'll add that next month. Lee has been very busy. And um, it's very impressive Bay Trail cred. Um, although we need to get Lee, we need to get you up to the sanit sanitation district also, I think. I, I think. I think you're right about that. Uh, you know, then again, I've, I've had a lot more time to kind of potentially put together this cred. So I don't, I don't think I'm doing quite so well. Unfortunately, uh, you know, as much as people like to say my job is all about being outside looking at trails, I'm pretty much in the office doing work all the time. Well, we're, we're sorry about that. But I think I'm going to try to give you and Tom an excuse to get to um, the Hamilton wetlands, which is right next to the sanitation district. We, I'm hoping to put together a, um, an in-person event there, um, assuming um, the, you know, the uh, pandemic allows that and all. Um, my, cred, my cred has improved since uh, last time. Um, now, many of you know, I've already done 100% of the Bay Trail, so I'm working on a, I had to, I had to start over, but you know, in the last um, week, I've really covered a lot of, I've, I've added a lot of new territory to this map, and we'll talk about that. We want to, we always like to do updates on, um, to me, like these things that get added to the Bay Trail are like, kind of like Christmas presents. And the one that's, that we've got now is um, up in Rodeo in the East Bay. And what's great is that Tom and I rode through this. Um, this was day one of my trip around the Bay. And um, this shows us a dotted line right now, but it is now, it is now completed. Oh, wow. And you can, you can now bike along the shoreline from uh, the Pinole Shores into Hercules and then into Rodeo. And then you hit San Pablo Avenue. This is a dotted line, but it's actually, it gets very, very little traffic. So this little link here is, is a real blessing for, for many people who are utilizing this part of the Bay Trail. So applause to you, Lee. That's what, that's what office work gets accomplished. Well, right, but I, you know, as I always tell you guys, it is really is a village that makes these trails happen. I, I have to credit East Bay Regional Park District, who are the ones who actually did all of the hard work to be able to get that project out on the ground. And that is our, our newest section, shiny section of Bay Trail. So if you have a chance, go out there and check it out. But, even, you know, the thing, Rodney, is uh, you do see, people can't really see it, but you do see a little bit more of a dotted line going towards the left as you're heading towards Hercules. Hercules actually put in somewhat of a what we call an interim trail. It, it's not quite to the standard that we can call a completed bay trail. But if you do go south and west towards Hercules, you can actually keep going until pretty much all the way to Pinole. So it's a really nice stretch. And yeah, uh, like th this is a, this is this is street here, but it's actually um, it's very safe. Right. Did you want to add to that? I uh, know the only other thing I was going to say is that uh, that stretch uh, on San Pablo Avenue from Rodale to Crackett is actually in the plans as well. It's probably a few years off, but Contra Costa County is working on it. Well, great. So that so that's your Bay Trail news, but um, you know, I'm sure we'll have more soon. And um, the one thing I'll, I'll add about this section, we biked by it, and it was the only thing I, I want. The, the only negative thing was. There was a beautiful looking water fountain, but it was still fenced off. That part hasn't been opened. So I couldn't count that as one of my um, circumnavigation drinking fountains. You mean you didn't hop the fence? I, I thought about it, but I figured they probably were turned, up, turned off. And of course, you know, you know how incredibly compliant I am. I do. Also. That's why I said that. <laughs> I was tempted. Let's put it that way. Um, 
So speaking of uh, speaking of fences, we'll talk about the Coyote Point Recreation Area in the Peninsula Shoreline. Um, and um, Ethel, you and I both have to visit this. So, so let's start, start give an overview of this area. Yeah, but before you know, before we start, I, I think I'd like to talk a little bit about how your experience and my experience is so incredibly diametrically different, <laughs> right? I envision you getting up in the morning and you know having your Cheerios, your oatmeal, jumping on your bike, getting out there, doing 40, 50 miles, right, with the wind at your face, going through all these different communities, taking in so much of the glorious land that we we are close to, right? And and frankly, there are times that I'm really jealous of that, you know, because I think it's got to be just incredibly dynamic. However, I'm a little afraid to get on a bike. So <laughs> that's a that's you know a little bit of a inhibits me, but who knows, maybe I'll get over that. But my experience is you know, I get up and I pick up one of these cards, which has been my lifesaver as a hiker for the Bay Trail. And I define a piece that I'm going to walk usually no more than five miles because it's five miles away from the car, five miles back to the car if I'm going by myself. And so my experience on the Bay Trail is really much more up close and personal, more intimate, if you will. I spend more time talking to people and maybe I'll bring a picnic, maybe I bring friends. So it's a totally different experience of the Bay Trail. And not to say that one is better, right, than the other. It's just different. And I think my point to everybody is, you know, you find, you find what, that which is most comfortable for you, whether you're on a bike or whether you're, you know, skating or whether you're walking or running. It's still just um, a great, place to be able to go out and, and, and see. And like I said, I can't push these cards enough. So um, my experience here, I started at Poplar Creek Golf Course, where that little X is, right? And important to know, when you drive in there, they want a fee. But if you tell them that you're going to the marina, the fee was waived, right? So you drive up to the marina, which is just a great, great, great space. You park, you can walk that marina. And I always end up talking to all the fishermen. And some of their tails are, you know, tall tails, but you, you kind of go along with it, right? And then going up to the Curie Odyssey Museum, that's a, that's a museum, a science museum and also a zoo rescue. They have like over a hundred animals there that they've rescued that no way will they make it in back in the wild. And in addition to that, which is really for kids, right? They have STEM programs for kids. They have summer camps, um, they have science classes and they just have a great, great land that you can picnic and have birthday parties. It, it's wonderful. But actually the best piece, and you have to get on the website to see this, but if you get on the website, you'll see that they actually have family movie night once, once a week, once a month. And you get there an hour before sunset. And it's a combination program with the library, San Mateo Library System and Parks and Recs and um, Curie Odyssey. And they have all activities for the family to take care of. And then as soon as the sun starts to go down, the movies start. So it's not quite like a drive-in. It's more like a sit-in, if you will. But you bring a picnic and you're out there under the stars. And, and I just think it's a wonderful thing to be aware of if you're in the community of San Mateo. So, Yeah, and I, I just want to jump in and say that it's very fitting that they do that because this area here back in the past was a drive-in movie theater. Uh, it just so happens that my family was in the drive, they're not in San Francisco, but they were in the drive-in movie business. So I was a little sad, but this has been turned into a really nice public space here also. Yeah, well, so now we've moved from drive-in to sit-in movies, right? Kind of appropriate <laughs> yeah. for the Bay Area sit-ins, right? <laughs> um, but so anyway, I did, I, I did that. And then I walked north um, up to Oculus, and that Oculus has a great, great campus. Again, 
there's lots of bubblers and there's benches and there's seating and and a bunch of um, a bunch of um, chairs of different so you can lie down or you can stand or you can sit regular and then there's also a bike repair station I think Art Rodney you tried to find that and I'm kind of, I'm wondering if maybe it's just open to employees or maybe open Monday through Friday but I think it's that in- also supports the idea of getting out of your car and getting on a bike and taking a ride. Yeah, this Oculus area is right here. It's a brand new campus with some high-tech businesses. And I, there's a lot of signs for bike parking and bike repair, um, but I couldn't find anything that was open to the public. I think it might just be coming later. Yeah. I guess, but it's, and it's a fabulous place for, for like a picnic or, you know, a nice safe outdoor place to get together with friends. Um, So definitely check this, just check this area out. We got a picture a little later on that shows some of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, I walked up airport Boulevard and quite frankly, I mean, that's, that was probably the, the low point of the walk, you know, as you make your way up airport Boulevard, Boulevard to all of the hotels and kid and kids restaurant and what have you. Um, so really the north part of, of this walk really just is curiosity and, and the marina. That's like the best part of that. Yeah, and I want to mention this red X. There, this, the um, Bay Trail map shows this being connected, but right now they're doing construction and you can't actually go through here. Right. So if you want to go to these other places that we're also going to be talking about, you will need to either, it's a pretty long walk to go kind of almost all the way to 101 and work your way back there. Or, you know, if you're on a bike, you can do it on a bike, but, or of course you could do it in a car. Those are your options. Right. Um, should we move into some of our, um, yeah, kind so of our takeaways? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So, so you mentioned some of these, right? Why don't we, why don't we just go, why don't we touch on, on them quickly? So, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more of this when we when I talk about the shoreline parks. But the shoreline parks has, um, if you if you drive south and you go into Seal Point, you you actually just walk into this great dog park area. Maybe you can maybe you should move yeah. up to the. I think there's some pictures too. Um, oh, too well, far. Well, let's ahead. Go, okay, go let's back. go over our, our basics. Okay. So you, you mentioned the dogs. So, so there's a wind. So there's this great, great um, dog park, and this whole area of the parks for San, on the shoreline are all dog friendly as long as your dog's on a leash, which is a real plus. They yeah, let's. It, we, oh, go, go ahead. They call part of it um, the wind walk because it's windy, right? And there's because of that, they've taken advantage of putting up some art wind sculptures, which really come alive with the wind and they either make noise or they, or they move. And, and I believe that they've been, um, these sculptures have been done by Reed Madden Design. And yeah, we've got see, pic- see some pictures, pictures of that. Of yeah. Um, so yeah, dog friendly. Um, and the other thing I love about walking is throughout the Bay Trail, there's always going to be information boards that are going to tell you a little bit about what's happening, whether it's what birds are flying or what fish the fishermen are looking for. And, and in particular here, and I think it was at Ryder um, Park, they have a whole section on the Ohlone native history and the Salsone um, tribe that lived there and how many, how many shell um, hills there are like in Cimitao yeah. County, yeah. Um, I think they're, what did I tell you earlier, like 300, there's over. Yeah, we'll, we'll see that picture that um, yeah. there's a map that we have. Yeah. Um, so drinking fountains, absolutely great. But, you know, if you're my age and you're walking, you really want to know where the bathrooms are too. So that stretch has a lot of bathroom availability, which is great. And, and then what we, you know, I've already shared the curiosity, um, great, great place. Yeah. Um, so, we always yeah, like to talk about. Takeaways. We like to talk about transit, and I have to say this this area is not very well served by transit. So mm-hmm. to get to Coyote Point, the nearest Caltrain station is two miles, and the nearest bus stop is one mile. Um, there's pretty good bike lanes leading to it. Um, and then there are, it's, it's a good place for um, people of all ages and abilities. So if you were in a wheelchair, if you're in a, using a walker, if you've got any kind of mobility issue, 
this is a good place to go. And, and as I noted, Rodney, it's I noted in the um, chat, it's uh, it's only four and a half mile bike ride from the uh, Millbrae BART station, um, and it's not a not a bad ride. It's uh, the Rollins Rollins Road. You have to go for about two miles. is um, is not too heavily trafficked, and then you can get off onto actual Bay Trail um, by the Bay for most of the rest of, of the for you know the majority of the rest of the way. So yeah, there's a good uh, there's a, a good nice, bridge. That's kind of a nice way to go on by mass transit for the Millbrae BART. Yeah, there's a good bridge that goes over 101 um, after you go on that Rollins Road. So I, I agree. That's a, that's a great way to get there. Um, Ethel, back to you. Yeah, so here's the, the Curiodicy at Coyote Point, um, which is really right right next to the marina. This, this is one of the first fishermen I ran into. And, and you can see um, he's holding up his catch. And he actually threw this back because he was like, no, I don't, I don't need a stingray. But and I've said this from the get-go from our very first um, show when we were down in San Francisco Marina, if you're on foot, I mean, take the opportunity to talk to these guys. It, it's great. They're, they're really ready and willing to tell you all about what they've caught and what they hope to catch. So kind of fun. So these are, these are the bubblers. Um, this is at Ocular. I don't know where the one on the left is, Rodney, do you? It's, um, I think it's Seal Point. I mean, okay. I'm going to go with Seal Point. Right. And you're right. This is the Oculus I, campus that you were talking about. Yeah, which is really sense. cool because it has that dog, the dog wa water fountain there. And it's all, it's all brand new. So just yeah. some really nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's well landscaped as well. This is the dog park that I was talking about at Seal Point. And so, and it's really huge and you can go in there and you can sit and, you know, if you don't want to be active and you just want to sit under the shade and throw, throw the ball for the dog, that's fine too. So they have a couple of these kind of shelters um, at the dog park. And you can see behind that, those little, those paths, right? Worn pathways behind, yeah. You're going to walk up there and then you walk up at the very top. So you have a couple of you have a couple of paths that you can take. You can walk at the very top. You can, there's two pathways halfway down, or you can walk really right next to the water. So depending on whatever your comfortability level is. And you know, once just on that last slide, once you get up that hill, you have some fantastic views of the bay from up there. If you like watching planes land, that's a great place to do it, or at Coyote Point. Little, little known fact, maybe uh, there's some interpret signs out there. That park is actually all built on an old landfill. Yeah, you know, I we were talking about that earlier today. I was hoping that it wasn't a landfill, but. Well, that's unfortunately the history of the Bay, right? It's, it's uh, before the 60s when people started deciding we want to go to the Bay and, and they created trails and the concept of the Bay Trail. It's pretty much where they had dumps and uh, where they put big industry, but we're, we're taking it back a little piece at a time. Yeah, and you know what? There are signs all over that walk that are pointing out um, what is being um, taken back, you know, so yep. it's pretty positive. Yeah, so there's... Uh, a better picture. There's the wind walk I'm talking about. And it and it truly is windy. It will challenge you a little bit. And yeah, so these sculptures the, look really great. Yeah, this is one of the first sculptures that you see when you get to the top. And it's probably the one that makes the most movement, but I didn't hear any sound. <laughs> and this, I couldn't figure this out, quite frankly. Lee, I don't know, maybe you have an idea or somebody else in the audience may. Well, you know what I think is maybe you go in the middle of that and I you did. make some sound. Well, I did. And I was, I mean, I didn't get a lot of reverberation. I didn't get a lot of nice sound at all. So I just thought, okie doke. Somebody well, out there knows more than <laughs> I do. Well, it, it did its job and got you curious and exploring <laughs> it, though, didn't it? You go. Yes, it did. <laughs> maybe they're like, they're big walks or something, you know? Yeah, and you know, it actually was, uh, when I was there, there were a couple of other people there. And so we ended up have, horsing around with it a little bit, you know, so it's kind of fun. So this is another one. This is supposed to be um, a bunch of sandpipers flying free over the Bay Area. And I think that brings in, you know, into mind the, uh, that this is right over the Pacific Flyway. 
this, this one, one looks really interesting. Yeah, and I didn't catch I didn't catch any noise and certainly no movement from this either. But this is also at the top, and then you can see the the um, binoculars behind it. And and it also is interesting, of course, you know what depending on when you're there, what the shadow is cast by the by these sculptures as well. Yeah, some some more, just uh, closer to the water, catching the wind in a different fashion. And a repeat. This is all. This is like halfway up the hill. And this is at the very bottom. I mean, you look at this, you feel like you're walking up to the pyramids, the great pyramids, right? But this is also really, really great. And the number of people running up and down. So you get another cardio opportunity here with these stairs. Um, I, did yeah. half, I did half of them kind of at a good pace and then I walked the rest, but. Yeah, kind of reminds me of the kind of reminds me of the Rocky stairs. I'm gonna offend anybody from Philadelphia. I was actually there recently. Those are very small steps. I'm convinced if Rocky had run up and down San Francisco, he would have been the champ in the first movie. Yeah, he's he's actually rather frail, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny. Tom and I actually do have ties to the Philadelphia area, and I think everybody remembers going to the museum and seeing people do the the run up like they're they're Rocky. You know, that's interesting because I'm headed to Philadelphia uh, in October, so I'll have to check that out. <laughs> so this is this is just another um, piece closer to the water that you can walk and clearly these guys have, are down there fishing. Um, and the San Mateo Bridge behind it brings to mind what you were saying, Lee, the, the views are amazing of the marina, um, of the bridges, and of course you've always got the, the planes flying overhead and the binoculars there. There's even one information board that talks about the communication between the pilots and, and the airport as far as landing. And so and this, this is that, yeah, this is that yeah. map we were talking about. Go ahead. Yeah, so this is, this is the map of the, um, the shell mounds that were, have been discovered in the San Mateo area. And I think that this is at Ryder. And basically they're saying in the San Mateo area, there were over 400 shell mounds that the Ohlone Indians built with, you know, clearly from shells, but also household goods that they weren't using anymore. And they used it to stop the flow of, of the tide, right, into their homes. So I just love being able to walk along the, you know, the Bay Trail and then be reminded that, um, you know, this is American Indian land, right? This is Native American Indian land. And so often we, we forget who came yep. before us. Yeah, and a sad thing for me is to think about a place that had shell mounds now being being a, a uh, landfill. Like that yeah. is something we really, we really need to do something about, you know, to, to, better, to, to better honor their uh, presence. Um, so, I think we're almost at the end of this. Um, any any last words, Ethel, on visiting this area? I think we have a there's here's some what a, a rendition of what shell mounds might have looked like. Right. But right. last thoughts? Yeah. So my last thoughts are: this is now my favorite place to go <laughs> until the next one. I've been here three times, spent a couple of hours, met some amazingly. Um, wonderful people, some that I'm going to walk with um, in the future, and so so do 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 it. And if you're if you're a dog owner, absolutely get down there. Yeah, and that's great you say that, Ethel, because I have that like, every time we do research for this show, we go to these places. I kind of fall in love with them, and I start to appreciate just their unique attributes. And, and that is why we did the show was to get people to explore other parts of the Bay and, and to do like local travel, you know, to um, explore these places that are nearby that don't require a plane ride to get to. Right. I remember when we did Co Coyote Hills Regional Park, right, with all the turkeys. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how many times I went back there because I just loved it. Right. And now I'm like going to um, the Shoreline Park so and Coyote Hills. So. Uh, Coyote Point. Anyway, yeah, great place. Do it. Well, 
It just so happens, Ethel, that I went to both in the last week. I went I to both no Cody Point. That, I have no doubt you zoomed through with the wind at your face. I went to both Coyote Point and Coyote Hills, just days apart. We're going to talk about that. So this is what I did on my vacation. And it is part one. I, I, I didn't really come up with a lot of um, lessons learned and takeaways. I'm going to do more of that next month. Um, this is the sign my wife made for me that she surprised me with at the end of the ride, 300 miles or bus. It was actually 304 miles. And I'm going to give you guys a, an overview of what I did. And then um, we're going to start talking a little bit about, especially um, segment one that I did with Tom. But the first, I, I originally planned to do this in five days. And what I really found doing this was, um, you know, I, I, that was way too fast because there's so much to enjoy. And also I had a lot of drinking fountains to count as, as we'll get to in a, in a little bit. Uh, so I ended up doing it in six days. And I think if I were to do it again, I would actually take even more time. And um, day one was 56 mile jaunt from my house, which is in Kensington to Napa. And we'll talk a little later about how I did this, but I basically went home every night. I took uh, public transit to get back to uh, home. And then the next morning, I would just go back to that same point and continue the ride. Uh, so that's the first one. Second one, um, this was kind of the toughest part, uh, Napa to Nevada, because um, this is a major gap in the Bay Trail. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. So this is Highway 116, which is a pretty busy highway going from Sonoma to Petaluma. And um, this part's really busy. This part, believe it or not, it's much less busy, but it doesn't have any shoulder. So that was, that was another little challenge, but I got through it okay. Um, then I went from Novato down to the San Francisco Ferry Building and took, a, took another form of public transit from there. Um, this was a shorter day going from the Ferry Building down to Redwood City. It was kind of hot that day, so I was happy to keep it to just 44 miles. And then day five turned out to be a shorter day still it, it wasn't originally planned that way. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to um, get a little further into this presentation. Um, had something, uh, it didn't knock me off my bike, but something that um, led to me stopping for the day unexpectedly. And then day six, I had a very pretty long day, longest day of the ride, 61 miles to my house. And I stopped here in uh, the Albany Bulb and was greeted by uh, my wife and our good friend, Barbara Williamson. And they had um, sparkling wine and goodies. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to have sparkling wine at that park, but we did. <laughs> uh, don't tell anybody. I, these, are, these are some of the objectives I had for the ride. And it, it was, of course, having done this show, it, was, it really did become a dream of mine to just do the entire Bay Trail. Um, so that was, of course, what I wanted to do. But safety, you just can't overemphasize how important safety is and we'll talk a little bit about my approach to that. Um, wanted to learn new things about the Bay Trail, and um, I did. I learned that it's just a fabulous experience to go to all parts of the Bay and to really compare them. I wanted to stay close to the Bay. That wasn't always possible because um, my, that route up in the north, for, for reasons of safety, I couldn't, couldn't take the closest road to the Bay. Talked about public transit. And then, you know, re, from what I consider reasonable mileage, I have friends for whom doing 50 miles in a day would be a pretty light day. Um, for me, it's actually pretty much the, it's at, the, at my maximum range right now. And I, you know, I just wanna have a good time. So I think that was a reasonable amount. Let's talk about safety. So you're using all kinds of different roads. Now, some of this is this, what we call the Bay Trail, but some of this wasn't because of these gaps. And this is the way I look at these roads. You know, How much of a shoulder do I have? How fast is the traffic? Um, you know, so, so the worst would be no shoulder with fast traffic and the best is a protected bike trail with, with very little congestion. Like number nine would be a protected bike trail with congestion. And a good example of that would be, um, would be the Golden Gate Bridge. Someone's asking um, 100, 100 plus mile around the bay and 100 plus miles. Um, yeah, so it's about 304 miles for the whole ride. I probably should have put that on there. I came up with I decided to just rate all the roads based on um, kind of what I knew about them. I visited a bunch of a bunch of them 
before I did this ride because I had another set of um, people, my cousin and some friends of his also did this ride and they didn't do it with me. So I wanted to like warn them about where to be careful. And, and this is that North, I call it the Northwest Passage, getting through from um, Napa to Petaluma. And these are these high speed roads, but um, you know, this is like the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, very nice there. And then um, like totally protected areas on in the East Bay down here in Hayward, there's some really nice parts in um, Marin also. I am going to post this map on my website and I'm really gonna ask you guys, those of you who are bicyclists to take a look at it and let me know what you think. I wanna know where you agree with me and especially where you disagree with me and, and kind of like help me come up with something that we can all agree on because I think this is important information to keep people safe. So I'm really gonna to wanna to know what you think. Talked about gaps. So the quickest way across the North Bay is Highway 37. And many of you have driven that and know all about it. I see um, some of you shaking your heads. Like, yes, you'd have to be nuts to bike on Highway 37. I agree. It is actually legal to bike on Highway 37, but it's not something I'm gonna do because the shoulder is non-existent in some places, very high speed traffic. The sort of good news about Highway 37 is that um, it is threatened by sea level rise and it will have to be replaced. And when it is replaced, it will have a protected bike and pedestrian lane right next to it. Um, bad news on that is that's probably gonna be at least a decade, probably multiple decades before that happens. Um, so we need to bridge, we need to bridge these gaps. Um, these, are, these heavier lines are where I identified gaps I needed to get around. And this is the key one. This is that route I did from Napa First, I went from Napa to Sonoma, which was really, really a nice route. But then from Sonoma to Petaluma is that busy section. I was really happy when that was over. And as I said, I made the most of mass transit. I took six different forms of mass transit and I'm gonna ask you guys to do a poll. So which form of mass transit do you think I use the most? So take, take this poll, I'll give you, this, again, this is like Texas. You're going to have 30 seconds to uh, to vote, and and then you're going to lose your ability to vote because that's how they do it there. And we'll see what you guys think as far as which which form of past transit I took the most. I got to say, I am so grateful to all these transit agencies for enabling me to do this with my bike. Many of you have seen the um, the bike carriers that are on mass transit. I'm going to end the poll in two seconds and. You guys are really smart. You say BART, and so it is. Um, BART, I took four trips on BART, two trips on a bunch of others, and um, and I took AC Transit one time. And just, this is, I think one of the takeaways from this experience I had for those of you who bike is that what I did going all the way around the day, you could do as wonderful day trips in, in, in a similar way, use mass transit. The other thing you can do is you can, um, you, you could drive to any of these mass transit points and do a ride from there and then use the mass transit, the train or the bus to get back to that point. Now, Tom, um, I wanna ask you, like you, you, you told me this, um, this trip that we did to Napa, that was the first time you'd done something like that on your bike. And um, what, what was your experience like? So I've actually um, done Barden bike, um trips quite a bit, which we'll talk about at another time. But this was the first time for me using a using a bus for a Bay Trail trip. And we we rode um, you know, all the way up to Napa, which was uh, turned out to be a 60 mile day for for me coming from from Berkeley, which is a longest day I've ever had. And so I was really ready to uh, for that to be um that to be over. And lo and behold, there was, as Rodney had planned, a bus that went from Napa with just one stop in American Canyon all the way back to the El Cerrito del Norte bus station, um, not far from, not far from my house. Um, and you know, and as I was lucky that I realized that you know, both Napa and American Canyon and Vallejo um, all have buses that that come down to the El Cerrito del Norte station, you know, pretty regular schedules through the day and could make doing something like going up to, you know, I'm going to find to go back up to American Canyon 
and head over to the Green Island Road area that Rodney introduced me to, which is a beautiful area in the wetlands off the Napa River. And that I think is going to be a great place for bird watching once the fall migration gets underway. And then, you know, those buses will really make it a practical thing to do without ever getting into a car. And, you know, of course, the bike allows you to get places you can't get by car for, uh, for birding. So it's a so it's a great combo. Yeah, I think that's, you know, that that's like definitely one of the things I've learned doing this is, you know, we just have all these tools at our disposal, but many people don't know about them. So, um, so it was great. And I have to say, Tom, you were a great company to do this trip with. Um, so here's, here's like, you know, some mass transit that uh, I took advantage of. The smart train in um, uh, Sonoma and Marin. So, you know, you always have to have a plan B. And in my case, my plan B happened on day five. I, I kind of alluded to it. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, get, I'll tell you, I, I learned a lot from this experience, but um, basically I was riding in South Fremont and I'm um, having a really good day. I was trying to do a whole bunch of miles on day five. And um, I think I was trying to do another 40 miles when this um, incident occurred. And basically this is plan B. I, um, I, I collided with a bee, a head-on collision. And um, he, he um, stung me on the lip. Actually, I don't know it was a bee. It was a, it was a stinging insect. And my lips started swelling. I was by myself and um, wasn't quite sure what to do. I called my wife. She um, said, you know, we should probably call Kaiser. I have had um, reactions to uh, insects before. And they said, call 911. And so these fine gentlemen from the Fremont Fire Department showed up to um, keep me company. And then later on, um, I ended up in an ambulance. This is my first ever ambulance ride. That was great. And it was so nice that they had room for my bike. And you can see I'm like actually kind of, in, you know, it was an abrupt end of my day, but kind of like, you know, okay, this is an interesting experience. I knew I was safe. This is my uh, paramedic uh, from the, uh, the Alameda Paramedics. And then, um, you know, I spent about a couple hours in the emergency room. They kept an eye on me and uh, gave me an antihistamine and, you know, lo and behold, everything, uh, everything was fine. Um, by the time my wife and our good friend Barbara came to pick me up, I got chauffeur. this is the only time in the ride I got a car ride home, I, I will tell you guys. Um, I felt much better. And I was really bummed that the drinking fountains in the, in the hospital didn't work and I couldn't add them to my drinking fountain challenge. So, you know, it kind of makes sense. You don't want people touching these surfaces in the hospital. But um, yeah, that was a little too bad. And then important lesson learned. I do have an EpiPen and I had not been in the habit. I hadn't been stung in like 20 years. Um, so I, you know, if you, if you um, don't think you have room on your bike for a first aid kit in your EpiPen, um, think again. That was, that was definitely one of my big takeaways. Um, I know some have said I should think twice about riding by myself, but I do, I do like riding by myself. I just have to be a little smarter about it. And so day six, day, day six was a longer day. I went back to the point where me and the bee collided. And I'll, I'll say, you know what? I think that bee was trying to tell me something. That bee was trying to tell me, you're going too fast. You are not enjoying this trip the way you should be. You're trying to make too many miles. Because on this day six, I had the best time. I went through, we were talking about Coyote Hills Regional Park. I went through that. Um, and, and it's such a delightful place in the morning. Um, went along the Hayward shoreline. And these are all places that you should not rush. And um, then I got to, you know, I, I, I took much longer than I expected to, to, to do this ride because I was enjoying myself so much. And then here's the Albany bulb where I was greeted by my sweetheart, my wife, Sarah, and she had her little sign. She surprised me and she had the sparkling wine, strawberries, uh, all kinds of goodies. And it was a great place to take a break. Um, so, you know, it takes a village to uh, support an idiot, in my <laughs> case. Um, these are all the people that along the way helped me. I um, had some good friends who were visiting from out of town and they fed me bagels and bacon. Don't tell my, my cousins about that. Um, I had um, this guy, Peter, I'd never met him before, but he worked for my friend, Alec, and he bought me a burrito. They wouldn't even let me pay for it. This is Barbara who gave me the ride home from 
the hospital, and of course, my very supportive wife, Sarah. So we have come to the drinking fountain challenge. And I know many of you have submitted guesses as to how many working drinking fountains I encountered on this trip around the bay. Um, but I'm just gonna go and sh show you like some of these pictures of these drinking fountains. And I have to say, I think this is a good idea for me to do this because it forced me to slow down. And it also helped me stay hydrated. I did drink at all these drinking fountains. And it really, I started thinking about like, you know, we take these things for granted, but there's all kinds of different drinking fountains. And it's wonderful that we provide these for people. It really makes recreation a lot more viable in a lot of places. And I started noticing like you've got these water fountains that will have, um, you know, an adult fountain, a kid fountain, a water bottle filler, and a dog fountain. And I call these four star fountains. Um, so I'm going to, on my website, we're gonna, I'm gonna document the location of all of these drinking fountains. And I'm gonna challenge you guys to find more. I, I have the world's record for drinking fountains counted during a circumnavigation of the bay. And I, I'm gonna challenge you to break that record. I'm not gonna tell you what the record is quite yet because we have another poll. We wanna know if you can guess on which, let me stop showing that, on which day, on which day did I encounter the encounter. most water fountains? And how many water fountains do you think I found on that day? So here's the poll. And once you guys vote on that, I'll give you, um, we're gonna do not just Texas, but we're gonna do, um, you know, we'll, we'll do Georgia. So now you only have 20 seconds. We'll give you 25 seconds, I'm gonna be generous. Um, and I'm seeing, seeing, seeing the guesses. Get in the 25 seconds, I'm gonna end the poll. This is like, sorry, you can't vote anymore. You've been disenfranchised. Um, and let me share the results. So the guess is that on day six, I encountered the most water fountains. And the second most you guys are showing is, is on day four. And you're guessing um, between 30 and 39 seems to be um, the, the um, the most popular guess. Well, I gotta tell you guys, you're pretty, you're pretty spot on because it was on day six, I encountered 29 fountains. And I think this is a good time to just say East Bay Regional Park District is really awesome to have provided so many drinking fountains. And um, you know, they do it in surprising places. Like we were talking earlier about landfills and it won't surprise you that there are not a lot of drinking fountains at landfills because nobody wants, nobody wants to put running water through a landfill. Um, but at East Bay Regional Parks, they often will have water fountains right next to the landfill. So good for them. Anyone want to guess? I'm going to put another poll up. Um, um, I want you to guess where the fewest, where did I find the fewest water fountains? So this is like the uh, booby prize. And again, I'm gonna give you 25 seconds to vote and see how few do you think I, I encountered. And this is definitely not a prize any, any um, area should, should want to win. Man, you guys are, you guys are good. This is the wisdom of crowds here. So, um, so uh, yeah, Napa to Novato. And um, I'm going to share the results. So the, so the winning guest was Napa to Novato. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I found zero, zero mm -hmm. drinking fountains. And that was, a, that was a long day. That was a problem. So um, it just really helps you appreciate these things. We take them for granted. I don't even know what it, well, first of all, what a drinking fountain costs and what, it, what the run rate is, like what do you have to pay for um, the water running to them, the ongoing cost. I intend to find out. I think we want to do a segment on this because I just think it's, it's like a really interesting thing. Like we take this stuff for granted, but they're really important to us. So now we, now we get to the contest and the winner will get a set of Bay Trail map cards. And we had all kinds of guesses all over the map. Total working drinking fountains that Rodney found. And here are 
are the people here are the people who entered the contest. That was great. You guys did that. And the answer is 72. 72. And I should I ran out of time, didn't put up a slide saying that um, Kathy Taruskin is the winner of the Bay Trail map cards. And she was spot on. She guessed exactly 72. And I guess a good question would be, is that the right number to have? I'd, I'd like to see probably some more in some places, but that was that was pretty good. Um, so we will, we will um, that's kind of the end of the show, although we always like to have Q&A and comments and we will move on to that in a moment. Um, do you wanna mention, we're gonna do our next show on October the 6th, first Wednesday of October. Um, we're gonna just do a general photography contest and I want, the photographs to be submitted a week before the show. Um, all the photographs that were in this show were done by either me, Ethel, or um, Tom, or um, our, my friend Barbara. So I didn't actually use, uh, didn't use other people's photographs for the first time ever. And I don't, I don't expect that to happen again for a while. Um, and um, also if you, anyone wanna comment on my prowess as a photographer, feel free. I, I, I know I have a long way to go. Um, I have to do something here to play Happy Trails for you guys. So give me a second for that. Let's see if I can. Open this Happy Trails. Why, why Go you, ahead, Ethel. Yeah, while you're doing that, there's a comment in, in chat about how many, um, did we count the bathroom? Did you count the bathrooms that you came across? So I think mm. that, you know, that's, that's got to be on the things to do list as well. Well, here's the thing. I, I would love to see this group, this community that we're creating around the show, start to do things like that together, because that would be really valuable information to have. Um, also, it gives me, it, that does give me an excuse to do another trip around the Bay. And um, I think my wife probably doesn't want me to do that right away. But um, I, I'd be happy to do another one of these things and, and count bathrooms. But I also would like to get some help. And um, you know, we, we can use our combined knowledge of the Bay Trail to kind of um, you know do this. That's a great idea. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Yeah. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling up. about the clouds that were together Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails to you Until we meet again Until we meet again All right, so I will go back to the slides just to show you um, when our next show is. Um, but we are gonna ask folks if you guys would like to um, share some thoughts and ask some questions or whatever. There's our next show on October the 6th. We already have a place we're gonna talk about. It's the Albany Bulb where my wife greeted me with um, sparkling wine. I guess we'll find out if that's an acceptable thing to do there. <laughs> uh, I'll report on that. I, and I, I, I promise I won't do it again if it isn't. And um, let, me, let me do one thing so you guys can. Um, I wanna encourage you to raise hands to unmute, but I am allowing you guys to do that. And um, you can also wave your hand at the camera to get called on, but I would love to hear any questions or comments. Um, I see Paco in the audience. Paco is always, you're, you are the most loyal of my virtual program um, participants. Uh, Paco, what did you think of the program tonight? You know, that is very, very fascinating. Like all of your travels, like biking. Well, thanks but Paco. You have to be careful. Uh, you're you're right, I, I have to be- I was, you know, you, you had an accident too, one time. That's a good point. Running into a bee and getting stung is not the same as getting hit by a car, but it is an accident. And it is, um, and I did learn something that I could have done to make it go a little better. 
Um, also, I mean, we have some hey, really, really nice up, people. Probably you have doing. to be conscious. To be conscious, cautious. You know, very, very careful. I'm, I'm, I am, I am looking out for those bees. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Paco. I am trying to see those bees, but I just had no clue this thing was was going to hit me. And he probably had no clue I was going to hit him either. You know, I, I hope he. Um, actually, it's she, right? I hope she's okay. And I do feel like she kind of did me a little favor, although caused a lot of drama, especially for um, my my wife and the um, uh, the paramedics and the the emergency room people. They were all fabulous people. But thanks, Paco. And I'll um, bet you, I'll bet you, you were just one of very few people who got in an ambulance and asked to take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, well, I, I told them all that I was doing this trip around the bay, you know, and they were all like, "Really? Oh, that's crazy! <laughs> what, what? Well, why on earth would you do something like that?" And, and especially the emergency room nurses, they were like, "You know, this we we see people in here all the time. You know, why do you need to do something like this?" Yeah, well, I'm um, sure they had some conversations after work about you. <laughs> um, you know, and we do we do want to make it. Our goal is to make this really safe, and, and so the emergency room nurses don't even think that. Uh, so that's by by completing the Bay Trail, that's what we're going to really accomplish. Other thoughts out there, Tom? Do you have anything you want to add to the whole experience? And Tom, I, I want to say one of the things that there Tom is. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say there. There, you know, a few other things that I noted. One is that, um, you know, I think I've, I've now crossed all of the bridges, and I think the Zampa Bridge going over to Vallejo, which has some really fine views of the North Bay, is frankly one of the the easiest and most pleasant of all the Bay Bridge crossings. Not quite as noisy, and you know, you're not quite as on top of the traffic as you are on some of them, and. Uh, and it's you know, ex you know, and the entrances to it are reasonable, and and uh, so I, I give it high marks for as uh, Bay Bridge crossings by bicycle go. Yeah, plus it has a, a, an awesome drinking fountain. Let's not forget that, right? With awesome a water bottle filler. <laughs> yeah, water bottle filler. Yes, with a great view also. And another thing about that bridge is it's it's very close to um, a Solano Transit hub in Vallejo, uh, it's, it, it's a pretty safe ride from the bridge to that hub. And, and so like you, you can really get there. And this is a good place to start, um, you know, a bridge to bridge ride between uh, the uh, Martinez Bridge and the Zampa Bridge. Yeah. And so great, I'm glad yeah, you got, you got to do that. that. Yeah, and if you end, the, end your loop um, in Vallejo, there's a really nice waterfront pathway with lots of Lots of fountains and restrooms and the Mare Island tap room if you're tired of water. You know, I forgot, we forgot to talk about that, Tom, that, you know, I, I always think I'm showing you all this stuff, but then you showed me some really great stuff in Vallejo in that waterfront was I'd never ridden on the waterfront before. And you, you got me on a, on a really good trail to American Canyon. So I think we all, riding with others, you can really learn a lot. And talk about it, you know, fun, um, fun ways to patch together interesting rides with, uh, um, with mass transit. Uh, Vallejo reminds me that there's the Vallejo ferry there, and so you know you can, can we've we've actually done this before, riding to Vallejo and then taking the ferry from Vallejo um, to San Francisco, and which is a, a lovely ride, and you know, and then and then barding uh, barding back home from there. Yeah, yeah, just get creative with even, the, the transit connections. Yeah. And even um, if you don't not, take the ferry, just sitting at the tap room and watching the ferries come and go in Vallejo is fun. Yeah. Um, Ron asked about food, and that's mm -hmm. a really great question. Um, I did often bring food with me, but um, I, I, you know, burritos were, especially doing all these miles, burritos are really good. And then what I learned was if you take like a half eaten burrito and you wrap it up, properly and you put it in your refrigerator and you bring it the next day that is like a pretty awesome late morning um kind of pre-lunch fuel so so i think the, I, I declare burritos the official food of bay bicycle circumnavigation and, and we what, what that means of course is that now we have to go look at all the uh, taquerias and rate them along the bay trail 
Yeah, that's kind of funny. There's a comment. That'll keep me busy. There's a comment in here saying, how about a collection of restaurants as well, right? So we've, I, got, I totally... we've got bubblers, we've got uh, restrooms, we've got restaurants, maybe breweries. <laughs> I mean, we, we, you know, we're saying maybe some of this stuff lightheartedly, but, right. yeah. but we, we, what we could do together is create a field guide to the Bay Trail. I, you know, I've got my website and, and what I wanted to do is be like kind of a wiki experience where lots of people are contributing information to these things. And, um, you know, we just put it out there because, you know, in the old days, people would buy, you know, we could, we could have written a book about, you know, hiking and biking the Bay Trail. Um, but today you don't have to do that. You can just put it out on a website, which people can access from mobile devices and they can have these experiences and have your information literally at their fingertips. Um, you know, now, now I will say my cousin, oh, go ahead, Lee. I was just going to say there, you know, it, beyond that, there was actually through the whole program, there's been a pretty healthy conversation about where to eat along the trail. <laughs> One person actually proposed, I think you, you read it as, as miles, but someone's actually suggesting a hundred meals on the yeah. trail. <laughs> oh, I read it the wrong way. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, so to your guidebook point, I, I think people are starting to ask you to go out and do some, um, you know, critiquing for folks so that you can make suggestions. <laughs> There are a lot of restaurants along the Bay Trail. I know that for certain. <laughs> well, my my cousin and his group they they stopped um, they they stopped at motels along the way, mm. and there's lots of motels. And so you could you could do this thing where you could like re re really like it's a travel experience um, where you go to these towns, you stay in a motel, you go check out like the, the awesome um, restaurants of the of that town, and and then you get up the next day and you do the same thing, just like you would in Europe. Only you're not in Europe. You're in your, you know, this, I, mean, I know not everybody on this show lives in the Bay Area. And so I hope no one who, who doesn't feels like I'm, I'm um, making, making, you know, assuming that they do. I don't. Um, but many of us do. And uh, this is at, this is at our fingertips. This is all totally available to us. And it's, you know, it's a great way to, to have a travel experience without getting in an airplane and uh, exposing yourself possibly to the Delta strain and uh, not to mention carbon emissions, right? So and helping, I think it's a winner. California economy. Right, right. And in, in, in learning more about this region that we live in, which, you know, I think I, I am always learning, like I went through Novato and I don't know Novato that well. And I just realized like there's so much of that town I need to explore more. And, um, you know, we, we drive through these things on, on the highways and we think we, we think we, I, I know where San Rafael is, or I know where um, American Canyon is, but you really got to explore these places because there's some really hidden treasures in them. Which, which makes me think, yeah, we're, we're going to need to do shows on some of these other places. Um, I see questions about the Bay Trail map cards. Um, used to be that you could order them from the Oakland Museum of California online. Is that still true? I see Penny nodding her head. No, well, so um, they, they had stopped for a while because they, they had to close because of the pandemic. So they had to uh, stop doing sales altogether for a while. Um, they're really still not selling cards online, but I think they're talking about coming back online soon. In the meantime, we found another group that sells online cards and maps and books, and they um, are selling the, the maps online right now. And uh, Tom had put in a link to the store with that information, and I'm going to reload it right now in the chat so people have that. Yeah, and I'll put that on our, um, our show page when I, when I do the show page. Um, if it wasn't obvious to you guys, by the way, doing this trip like in the last week um, did make putting the show together a bit of a, of a, a hustle. Um, and especially the B thing kind of threw me off. I was counting on, um, I took a day off after that just to like chill out. And um, I, I, but it's always good to, um, to have a deadline, right? Um, so the show notes will go up. They will have that information. The map cards are, I love having my physical set of map cards but they are also available on the Bay Trail website. And I find them very handy for accessing on my, um, my smartphone while I'm out riding. 
Yeah, and ju just so people know, um, even without the cards, there's a uh, online navigation map that's probably the most up-to-date map with all the segments of the Bay Trail that you can just access using your smartphone and zoom into different spaces. So it's kind of two different options you have. Yeah, and those are great. And Google Maps in general is useful and great, but um, it got me it got me to a really nasty dead end in the peninsula and um, added like another I don't know six seven miles to my day. So I was not, I was not saying nice things about Google Maps by the end of day four. Um, that was one reason one of the reasons I. I um, I bugged out in a, that's a bad phrase to use, I guess. Um, I quit early in Redwood City that day. Other questions or comments? Oh, Rodney, by the way, that's going to be an art viewing adventure called. And then there is, is that program. Well, there are. So, um, Paco, so talking about some of my other events, and just, just remember, Paco, because of, um, well, it's always the second Monday. So that's not, it's not gonna be this Monday. It's gonna be a week from this Monday, but we're gonna be talking about the Diego Rivera Pan American Unity Mural um, at SF MoMA right now, which is just a fabulous thing to see. I, I cannot emphasize how much I love this thing and it's free. You do not have to pay to get into the museum to, to see this because it's in the free area of the museum. And my speaker on that show is Will Maynez, who is who's a guy who's devoted his whole life to this mural. So um, you know you'll you'll see it in the email I sent out on Friday. Um, information on that, but it's going to be a really great show. And um, right now, I think I told people that Will Maynez would be my guest on the twenty seventh, but he's actually been moved up to the thirteenth. So thanks for thanks for I mentioning that, Nikki Paco. Will be there. Yes, I guess Nikki Nikki will be there on the twelfth. Well, Nikki Trasvina will be there. So we're kind of getting into a different area than, than this, um, but, but it is, you know, the Diego Rivera mural is a very important part of Bay Area culture. So I almost think it's adjacent to um, talking about the Bay Trail. And, and seriously, like you will, you know, you will not, you definitely have to pop into SF MoMA at some point and see this thing. Other And then thoughts? Richie's show also. Richie's show. And Richie Unterberger, the, the great rock yeah. historian who is a good friend of mine. Yes. Um, yeah, someone's asking about the Bay Area Ridge Trail. And um, we love the Bay Area Ridge Trail. This is the Bay Trail, Bay Trail Confidential. We're the part of the trail that's on the bay. But I, I could be tempted to do some kind of Bay Trail, Bay Ridge Trail thing at some point. Um, I, I had a really good time talking about it on the car when we did the Carquina Strait show. And I, I think it's fantastic. So the other thing is someone could, we could have a spinoff show like Bay Ridge Trail Confidential, um, which would not have me as the host because I'm going to be, I'm really busy. I'm very focused on the Bay Trail. Uh, but uh, if someone wanted to do that and be like our sister show, that would be fantastic. Just need, to, just need to know how to use Zoom, right? Yep. Some passion and, and a Zoom account. <laughs> yeah. yep. I'm yep. passionate too, Rodney. Paco, you could do it, man. You could be the... <laughs> and, um, and also I, Peter and Kevin too. All the, say that again, Paco? Like Peter and Kevin. Also, yep. they are very incredible for we, we have we have like I think these these zoom programs are kind of forming communities around them and we do have like for the art viewing thing it's a community this bay trail thing is community I know many of you have been on many have been on multiple and maybe even most of these shows and um, I just I want us to like really come together and, and do some great things I, I, I'm really I've thought about that a lot on the ride that um, we could create something that you know, people throughout the Bay Area could use to enjoy the Bay Trail. And maybe even people coming from out of town would get clued into it and could take advantage of it. And, you know, it might seem like drinking fountains isn't the most important thing, but it's a model for, you know, we can do this, as we said, for, for other things that are out there. Like we could do all the museums on the Bay Trail. We talked about Curiosity. Uh, there's other really fabulous museums. Um, there's military museums, there's other art museums. 
Um, next, next show, we're actually going to be talking about some art because the Albany Bulb has just kind of art that it's, people have put in there. Um, not necessarily for mission, but it's, it's pretty cool art. Any more questions or comments? It's really nice to see the numbers for this show. We had it, we got, I think we got to 99. We didn't quite get to 100, but um, I feel like we have a really strong audience and, and you guys are, we're gonna, we're gonna keep doing these things and, and fun with this together. But Richie, such a very big crowd, like almost literally like well, 100. Oh no! So Rich, Richie, my buddy Richie Underberger, the rock historian, he he beats me regularly, um, but but uh, you know he's also like he's devoted his whole life to that study. So I I'm happy for him, and I'm usually in the audience. I'm usually bumping up his numbers, but yeah, Richie Underberger, he does this rock histor history show on um, the second and fourth Monday of each month at six p.m. and it's hosted by the Community Living Campaign. And I'll tell you what, Paco, since you keep bringing it up, I, my, Friday, my Friday email will include a link for Richie's program also. Because because Richie's Richie is a dear friend and uh, someone I greatly admire. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so and also Michelle too. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. I day. think we're, I think we probably should wrap this up unless anybody else wants to raise their hand or make a comment. And I just want to thank you guys again for, um, you know, you guys kind of made me want to do this trip around the base. So the, so the credit's all yours, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, de I definitely was thinking about Bay Trail Confidential in this great community that we've put together um, and look forward to, um, to talking about more great stuff. And who knows, maybe even another Bay circumnavigation down the road. Everybody have a good night, stay safe, and go Giants. Go Giants, our Bye. official Bay Trail Bye. baseball have team. Have a great evening. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>